So today we have a young kid, he is no more a kid actually, he is aspiring to be much bigger than what he looks right now. We have Rohan with us. Hi Rohan, welcome to Web Dunya. Thanks for having me. So what brings you to India? Uh, mainly I've been working with the Augustia Foundation. Uh, they're based uh, in Bangalore, um, about a one hour train ride from Bangalore in a small village called Kuppam. Okay. And the goal of this foundation, it's an NGO, and they basically teach underprivileged children in rural India um, science and math. And the way they teach is a very interesting method. A lot of times that in school, looking at textbooks, kids get bored looking at science and math. So they teach uh, science and math through a very hands-on mean, which which really inspires kids. So how did you get connected to this Agastya Foundation? Yeah, so th I actually got connected, it was kind of a funny story. Um, I got selected as one of the 40 uh, Google Science Fair finalists. Okay. Um, and uh, Agastya Foundation actually won the Google Impact Challenge. So through that, when I was applying to multiple NGOs, um, mm -hmm. when I found out about that, I thought it was a perfect fit. You became interested in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you've won so many awards, so what all have you been doing till now? What was this Google Idea Award and then how it got, you know, to all of all along to Bangalore and then what are you doing there in the rural village? Sure. So basically this started with the Google Science Fair, um, which is in, through online submission. You submit, uh, you do research, uh, scientific research, coming up with a new idea uh, or an innovation. And then uh, once you've created a full research paper, then you submit it to Google, who reviews your, your um, idea. So my idea was actually, um, it started when uh, I was really tired of turning the lights in my room off. Mm -hmm. And so my parents kept on telling me to turn the lights in my room off. To I save started, energy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. And I kept on forgetting. That's, that's a big problem in India as well. Exactly. People yeah. just don't do it. They keep it open and they, they don't conserve energy. Yeah, and in U.S. it's a lot worse because there are ten times the number of lights. All right. And um, so... I basically wanted to build a device on my own that could actually do this for me. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of problems in US with the devices that they currently use. So they're called motion sensors. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that it basically uh, counts people by looking at the motion. Right. So if I'm not moving, then it doesn't know I'm there. Oh, okay, yes. So suppose I sit in this chair and right. I'm not moving. So after five minutes, lights will turn off on turn me. Off. I've seen that with a lot of motion yeah, sensors. Yeah, exactly. So even India has a lot of uh, places where you find mm -hmm. motion sensors. But that's the problem, you're right. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes worse when you put them in elderly homes because there have been accidents. Mm -hmm. So they're all uninstalling these devices in the United States. Oh, okay. Um, so I wanted to make a device that was accurate, but also was quite cheap. So these these uh, devices cost more than fifty dollars for each installation. That's a lot. That's a lot. So the way I was able to create a solution was um, using a low power uh, infrared method. Mm -hmm. It basically counts the number of people in a room. So suppose there are five people in a room. So how it, it counted? So the way it counted is uh, suppose you have two beams. Mm -hmm. As I walk into the room, this beam gets blocked. Mm -hmm. I go by this beam, mm -hmm. then I go by this beam. Okay. When I go out the other way, I go by this beam, and then this beam. Okay. So based on the order in which I go by the two beams, mm -hmm. then you know whether the person walked into the room or out. Okay. So then you can create a simple counter uh, to count the number of people in the room. Okay. So suppose there are three people who go into the restroom. Mm -hmm. So two people come out, there's still one person one in the person. restroom. So the lights will the still light. uh, be, yeah, okay. be turned on. That, that, that's interesting. That's mm -hmm. intelligent actually. Yes. And so as soon as the last person leaves the room, then the lights will turn off. So this was all your thought? Mm -hmm. and yes. you created the project? Also. Yeah, I'm actually filing for a patent on this. So. But it, don't you think it's too young to be filing a patent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the good news is so I actually get to... you want to be an entrepreneur? Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I'm, I actually like the idea of um, looking at the intersection between engineering and business right. uh, or entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. not just creating tech because it's cool or improving performance of a right. computer, right. but actually having an impact mm -hmm. and also um, having a business opportunity there also. Right. So you also plan to connect it to the internet somehow because yes. today's world is digital, right? So yes. You can also do it through your mobile or something? Mm -hmm. So in the Conrad Spirit of Innovation competition that I won, um, I actually focused on that also. So it's called Internet of Things, yes. um, where multiple devices can communicate with each other. Right, right. So one of the problems with my pre with my device that I explained was that um, suppose you have two entrances in your room, mm -hmm. so you could walk in one entrance and then leave the other. The right. device wouldn't you know. Will not know. Yeah. Right. So. so 
with Internet of Things, I was able to have um, each device at each entrance. And then they communicate over Wi-Fi with each other and uh, share the total number of people in that room. That's a smarter way of looking mm -hmm. at things. And the cool thing is that um, with that, I can actually pull up my smartphone and say there are this many people in the room right now. Okay, that's, that's great. So uh, you have been in India for a while now. So how, how did you find it? I really like India. Um, I haven't been here for some time now. Right. Um, but it's a really great experience. Well, because what's the difference? How, how do you study? Um, so, well, I actually... Um, well, what do you mean by that? I mean, how do you compare? Both the countries. How in do I compare? Anything like social, infrastructure, education. I, I think India has a very rich culture right. because it's it's so it's it's it, one of the oldest cultures, right. I guess. Um, so it has a lot of history mm -hmm. and there's a lot to learn there. But what what's the current status? Hmm? What's the current status? I mean, India has developed a lot since I last came here. Okay. Um, so, like, you can see lots of different signs lighting up. With it looks uh, very developed. In terms of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, in terms of the society. Everything is very developed now. Uh, is it? It's good. Yes. And education. Uh. So. So there's a lot of like changes made to the education system. Um. I think. Now, the, the, the private schools have become very, very successful mm -hmm. in India. I'm not sure exactly about the public schools, um, how they compare to the United States, but... Um, but but uh, do you know that these private schools also charge a lot of money? Yeah, you know? I do know about that. I have heard stories so about it's that. It's more like a business than, yes. than imparting education. Mm -hmm. So that's the bad part of it. Yes, that how, is true. How is it in U.S. actually? Uh, in U.S., public schools are free um, mm -hmm. up to 12th grade. Mm -hmm. um, and they're good, right? They are in pretty India, good. In India also, there yes. are public they, schools. They yeah, are they are good. But, but yeah. they're not good. You don't have teachers. You don't yes. have the infra. So that's that the problem. That is true. Yeah. So in America, it's not like that. It's not like that. Um, you do have teachers. Um, and a lot of them like to teach. They make sure that if students aren't as interested in a the subject, they figure out a way to actually get them interested mm -hmm. uh, so that they actually study. Um, like how? So, well... That's very interesting. So, in fourth grade, I had this very good teacher um, who, who taught, like, she, she was trying to teach us math. And as a group, um, the kids weren't as interested. Mm -hmm. So, what we did was um, she had us build rockets and th uh, taught us math through simple model rockets. Mm -hmm that we got to launch. Mm -hmm. um, so she taught us simple trigonometry on how the, how high the rocket was. knowledge was Exactly. Okay. And so the idea of building a rocket in, in class was so interesting that we, we, we learned math that way. So would you like to come here in India and settle or you would still want to be in the US all, all your life? I personally would be in the United States, mm -hmm. but I would visit India pretty often. Pretty often. Yes. Okay, and how, how do you feel when you actually go and, you know, work with uh, students who actually come from MIT or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, of higher age groups and doing the same thing and you, you are probably youngest of the lot. That's yeah, uh, that happens a lot because um, when I actually was selected as a top four in the United States and went to Beijing mm -hmm. for the international science competitions, mm -hmm. I was also the youngest yeah. there. Um, because uh, the application process for colleges starts in senior year, uh, in fall of senior year. Mm -hmm. So everyone there knew where they were going. They were going to high high colleges like Stanford and MIT in mm -hmm. the United States. So I was the youngest of the batch there. Right. But it feels great to be working with these smart kids. And, and what keeps you connected to India? What uh, keeps me connected? Other than your mother and father. I mean, of course, they'll mm -hmm. keep talking about India and they'll keep teaching you a few things, you know, which will keep you... But other than that, what keeps you connected? Well, I have, like... I, I guess the biggest thing is that I, when I want to... When I come up with project ideas for... Um, when I come up, come up with project ideas, uh, usually they aren't like first world problems that I'm trying to solve. Um, my mom always says that you have to actually go to like um, third world areas or like rural areas to actually be able to come up with or see the problems that people have and to actually be able to solve those solve problems. That. Yeah. Do you watch Hindi movies? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I used to a lot. Right. Now I've watched like less movies, Hindi and English. Okay. But, yeah. Both of them. You, you don't get time. Uh, I get so excited about the research and science that I do yeah. that it becomes uh, I want to finish my homework and then as soon as that's over get to work on on building stuff. Yeah. Which was the last movie you 
Which was the last movie I've seen? I think I saw Happy New Year. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's quite... It's not that new. Movie, yeah, it's actually. not that new, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, you also uh, speak Marathi well, right? Yeah. So, uh, Marathi movies also you follow? Is it? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I can understand all the... Like, I can understand Hindi. I can't speak it well. And Marathi, I can, uh, like, speak decently. <laughs> decently? Yeah. So... Uh, I can't understand that much. <laughs> I just tried. Uh, yeah. Uh, while going through your website, Rohan, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, saw that each of your project is somewhere connected to ecology or environment. Mm -hmm. So, is that topic very close to your heart and how, how you feel? Well, because it's not just technology or yeah. uh, mm -hmm. innovation. It's, it's more to do with the ecology and the environment. Yes. So, um, I guess since I was very young, um, as a family, we've had a focus on, you know, helping the environment or not leaving a big uh, carbon impact. Mm -hmm. So, making sure that we're as sustainable as possible. Like, when I was very young, uh, our fam family got a composting machine. Um, so, like a big barrel and then we used to compost food. So mm -hmm. we always had this focus on sustainability and, and that kind of um, trickled into my projects later. So uh, it it's nice to see that connect and Rowan we wish you good luck and we hope to see that uh, young budding scientist also becomes a successful entrepreneur and also brings in a lot of innovation that helps society Thank you. as a whole. So we were the Rohan Deshpande se, jo ki अमेरिका में रहते हैं उनकी जो माता जी हैं अनगा कलवड़े वो इंदौर से हैं और जो संस्कार और शिक्षा उनको मिली है विरासत में उसी का परिणाम है कि वो बहुत कम उम्र में अपने नाम से एक पेटेंट भी फाइल करने वाले हैं पर्यावरण के साथ-साथ तकनीक को जोड़ना उनकी बहुत रुचि का है और अगर हमें लगातार बटन बंद करके बत्ती बुझाने में आलस आता है या उसका कोई तरीका हमारे पास नहीं है यह केवल भारत की समस्या नहीं है अमेरिका में भी यह समस्या है और उसके लिए जो उपाय अभी तक किए गए हैं वो बहुत सफल नहीं रहे हैं क्योंकि जो आपकी मोशन को पता लगाते हैं आपकी हलचल के जरिए लाइट बंद करते हैं उसमें एक दिक्कत बड़ी यह होती है कि कई बार आप केवल कुर्सी पर बैठे हुए हैं और लाइट बंद हो जाती है और इसमें खास तौर पे बुजुर्गों को दिक्कत होती है तो उन्होंने अपने आविष्कार के जरिए ऐसी तकनीक ढूंढ निकाली है जिससे उनको ठीक ठीक यह पता लग सके मशीन को कि इस वक्त कमरे में कितने लोग हैं और कितनी लाइट की जरूरत है मतलब बिजली बचाने की दिशा में एक बहुत अच्छा प्रयास है और उम्मीद करते हैं कि इस पेटेंट के जरिए ऐसे उपकरण बाजार में हमको जल्दी ही मिलने लगेंगे और हम यह भी उम्मीद करते हैं कि वो उपकरण केवल अमेरिकी बाजार तक सीमित ना रहकर हिंदुस्तान के बाजार में इस हिंदुस्तान से निकले हुए हिंदुस्तान में जिसकी जड़े हैं ऐसे नौजवान बालक का यह आविष्कार हमें हिंदुस्तान में भी देखने को मिले हम शुभकामनाएं देते हैं और वेब दुनिया से बातचीत करने के लिए उनको धन्यवाद भी देते हैं थैंक यू